We've been through call to order, set adjust agenda, which we haven't adjusted the agenda yet. We just pointed out things we want to be sure we hit within the things on the agenda. And, and can, um, can whoever records it send me a copy when all is said and done, please? Yes, I will. Thank you. All right. And next, uh, so communication from the audience. It doesn't look like we have any audience. Do we? Or do wait, there's another. Am I missing anybody? No. Okay. Um, and then, uh, all right. So review information covered last time. Um, Mike, why don't we just start with the audit thing? Because Mike brought that up. Um, I, I believe that Casey checked with our um, auditors who basically said they give us a... Um, Oh, I can't remember what the term is. It's a demerit for not being able to audit the um, electric department accounts because it's out of cycle, so they can't include that. Um, I didn't get how that functionally affects us. Casey, can you weigh in on that at all? Um, so basically, they did say that what could happen is if they were able to view HEB's audit, they could incorporate some, uh, I don't know, like some narrative or comments and sort of tie it in. They said for, there isn't some other towns where they have an electric department and then the town and they just um, sort of do like a peer review of that or they look at it and then they incorporate some like comments to it. They're not doing like a full review, but they can then um, add in some comments to ours in regards to it. If, the, if they don't want to sync up with us, that that's an alternative that could be done. That's what I got from Rick. And the, I, some I think, I think the question is what, what is the value or non-value or harm or non-harm of the finding on the town's audit? And according to our expert, there is none. And that's the stuff I shared with you, Eric, there. Mm -hmm. And it's been long enough, I don't even remember what it said, but uh, that was from Jeff Graham. Um, and I he, think what it is is that so, it's a department yeah. of the town. So it's basically like we're like if we're not including it in our audit, it's like we're leaving it out. That was where the the um, sort of negative is, is that because it's technically considered a department, a, a, like water sewer um, enterprise fund, it's it's not being included in it by excluding it. Right, but then the larger question is, does does that have any negative effect on the town? Right. In any, in any real way? And that I still don't have an answer for, we did have some- I think some it has to do with the, the accounting principles of an audit, so- um, Right, that's, I'm clear. That's where, yeah. Yeah, I'm totally clear that the accountants don't like it. Um, I'm not clear um, how that functionally affects us. Sean, do you recall what Chad said in regards to that? Um, what they indicated is that they do have they do have some other communities where their electric departments uh, other audits they do in other communities excuse me where they have uh, they do have other situations similar where it may be that the department is running on uh, a June 30 fiscal year end where the town's running on a calendar end so that's the first point I would make um, I think they just want it cleaner is is my quick response uh, you know they're they're just not synced up. So uh, I think that Casey framed it well. The general feedback that we got from Chad Hewitt was because they're not synced up date-wise, um, the way that the auditors, auditors think about the electric department is in effect, it's like a, a wing, uh, you know, a town department, if you will, you know, recognizing, look, you got independent operations, independent general manager, but the town touches it. So I think they just have some angst about just that detail right there. Uh, it seems to me the auditors have to get together and hash this out a little bit is my thought. It strikes me, you know, that Jeff Graham took a different view and said that it, it wasn't adverse. And there is a difference between the electric department and other town departments from a revenue standpoint. 
which is that the electric department's revenue is wholly separate and regulated. Uh, whereas water and sewer is completely within the purview of the town, just as, a, as an example, or some of the other um, departments uh, that fall within the budget. If, if those were left out and um, left out of the audit, there would, there would be a chunk of revenue that's coming in from, from taxes that isn't being audited, but that's not the case with the electric department. Yeah, what I got for additional information, I'm just cross-checking some of my notes from uh, discussions with, um, it's Chad Hewitt with, uh, he's with Sullivan Powers and Company. Um, he's referenced some other towns and then he's talked about a situation in Stowe where uh, Stowe has chosen that they will have their audit done on a calendar and a fiscal year. So that would indicate to me Stowe Electric Department is doing a similar situation how HED is going about it. And let me just close out the statement here. What do you, I'll just read the sentence. The town of Stowe has chosen to have their audit done on a calendar and fiscal year so they can obtain an unqualified opinion. So Chad's indicating here the difference in the audit end dates is actually leading to, um, you know, uh, finding against the town so that it, it's, uh, it's not allowing for us to get an unqualified opinion, you know, a mark against, if you will. So Stowe, the town of Stowe does audit twice a year so that they have an audit for their processes. And they also pay for a second audit to line up with uh, the electric department. That's what I'm seeing here in yeah. this correspondence from Chad Mike. Yeah, that's a correct yeah. statement. So it's, yeah. so it's the town paying for it, not the electric department. Well, that's I correct. don't know that for sure. Yeah, but no, I, think it, just, I know that for sure. Okay. Yes. I mean, that's just from the financial perspective, obviously some extra cost, you know, just speaking up for the town here, the other thing that is going to be challenging for, it, you know, if we go that route, obviously this would be a board decision. Um, you know, we're going to probably be looking at some single audit processes in fiscal years moving ahead, just, you know, given some of the grants we have been receiving. So just food for thought, but uh, substantially, uh, Mike, you know, because you work with these various departments, looks like they've gone that way just so they have the two and can make sure they can, assuming there's no other issues, have an unqualified opinion. You know, that's yeah, what so we're trying we, to seek out. Yeah, some of the other stuff that Jeff uh, identified is that we are regulatory mandated to do it the way we do it. So for us to do something else would be against the regulatory processes we have to follow and calendars that we have to abide by. Um, and I think you nailed it, Sean, exactly is, okay, so what it circles us back to. So if the harm is X, which is nothing, then should we spend an extra 20 or 25,000? Or if the harm is a hundred thousand dollars worth of harm, then it certainly would make sense to do the extra auditing. But I don't know what that is, or what that harm is, or what that harm isn't. It sounds like the question is really what is the effect of having that kind of a qualification in in an audit opinion, and I suspect there's no one at this meeting who can answer that question. Right. Oh, I, target. Sorry, Eric, go ahead. I propose we just um, table this for now. We'll follow it um, in our interact, continued interactions with the town auditors. We'll try to pin down what the, if any, negative impact there really is. I mean, yeah, I know they don't like it, but I'm not. Okay. So half, half jokingly and half serious here, um, Jeff Graham did say that the audits, as long as they are completed within 90 days of each other, they could actually be utilized. So if you guys could delay your audit results by 90 days and we could speed ours up by 90 days, you could use them. So you might wanna investigate that on your end too. I thought that you guys were a year behind in audits. When we... It's six months is the way it happens. No, but I thought there wasn't an audit I thought the last audit report was <laughs> our okay. audit is always completed six months behind yours. No, that's not what uh, I understand what Eric is saying. We were okay. behind, but we're, we're not anymore. Okay. Oh yeah. We were missing one. 
but that one is caught up and we have another one coming at the end of, uh, at the end of June. So Amen. we'll be all caught up uh, in the next couple of months easily. And the Delay. awesome, the oh, awesome sorry. would be 45 days for each one and that would bring it to within 90 days. Is that what it, yeah, I knew there was something I couldn't remember, but there, there is a uh, gap that's allowable. And if, like I said, half joking, but half serious, maybe there's an angle there to investigate. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe so because our auditors come in in the late summer, early fall, typically. Right. Or, and it's been in October recently. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if we can so we shift can our, each shift their calendars a little and, and close the gap and make it work, that's going to save money and solve the problem. Uh, uh, Mike, is that a P PUC requirement, like an administrative requirement, or is that state statute? What? Uh, the the uh, hundred eighty days. Uh, oh, that's that's uh, some information Jeff Graham gave me. Okay, I, I mean yeah. just uh, the, the requirement for when the audit for the Hardwood Electric is, or for municipal, municipal utilities. For our fiscal year. Fiscal year, yeah. Fiscal yeah. year, okay. And that's a administrator, or is that a statute? That's from the PUC okay. statute. Yeah. But that being said, there are ways uh, that we have exhausted routinely and regularly to extend or uh, speed up the process based on availability of our auditors, which I'm sure you all run into as well. Um, so like I said, maybe we can manipulate that and use it to all of our advantage. I, I propose we just track it and see, I really want to understand before we try doing anything, I want to just understand what the negative consequence is. Sure, I'm, I'm just suggesting that once that is identified, Eric, exactly, then maybe we strategize on all possible ways to uh, remedy it. Yeah. Who, who would who would have the information about what, what the negative consequences would be? Would would the accountants have? I mean, they're the ones that are uh, they're issuing an adverse opinion, so presumably yeah. they would have some idea about how that might affect us. But I don't like, to my knowledge, has never affected us in terms of our ability to get bonds or you know get a good rate on our bonds. Or I'm not really sure what else it impacts. Yeah, so Jeff, um, and I don't know what was or wasn't shared with your team, but the, one of the things he said was he could, uh, the type of harm he could envision or dream about that could come about would be, uh, for example, the town missing out on a uh, special uh, bond rating or a special interest rate on some available monies due to the fact that the audit wasn't available uh in coincident with yours uh, but it would be a very one-off event I, I i can resend that email i'm trying to remember it from from quite a while yeah. back now yeah i mean i yeah i just don't know like like i said i don't think we've encountered anything like that where we were denied access to right any funding or any special rates or anything i think you're correct eric i'm not we're not aware of anything on you know my end or casey's end that it's just the, the auditors want to try to strive for this unqualified opinion. Right. All right. Great. What else do um, every, what else does anyone have from our review of information last time? Are there things that people want to review that we talked about last time? Nothing. Crickets. Should, should I? Uh, we did talk about, um, you know, at that time, uh, the town offices were, uh, town manager's office was in the process of getting our tracking record built. So you may have just addressed this now as, as a part of this discussion, Eric, as far as the assignments that are up. Um, or wait. Sure. No, that, that was good. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. So um, on the town's website now, we do have the uh, master list, if you will, of the various assignments. So that would include uh, Hardwick Electric Department assignments. And um, what we're seeing is that we have uh, two uh, seats coming up. It would be Lynn's, who's in a two-year. That's expiring June 30th, 2021. And then Nat's, is, uh, he's in a three-year. That's expiring June 30th, 2021. 
so uh, just generally for the procedure, what we would be doing in the near, well, sometime in, uh, actually in the near future, excuse me, we would uh, public, yeah, publicly advertise that we have these uh, seats, the commissioner seats available. And I'm assuming we would, uh, or we would have information up on, we'd go to the paper of record, which is uh, News and Citizen now. Um, we aren't able to do the Gazette. We can post in the Gazette, but it's not considered our paper of record because it's not a published paper that has to do with state statute. So we'd put up on the website, we can put it on front porch form. I assume HED would put it on their website. We would advertise for a 10 day period. And then the select board would uh, discuss the uh, decision on assignments at a June. Uh, it'd probably be the second June meeting is what I would anticipate. So that's it in a nutshell. That's what we got on that process. Ben? Yeah. Um... I don't know the history of how this occurred, but the statute, the town charter establishing the board of commissioners, establishing HED is, is the, the utility, provided for staggered terms initially. It did not say that, that the terms had to be shorter terms. And in fact, there, the, there's a general statute that applies to municipal utilities if there isn't a specific statute. So this, this doesn't apply to HED because HED is a creature of the town charter, which is a, which is a, a statute. But there's something in it that I think is, makes a lot of sense because of the nature of what HED does and, and the nature of the business, what the state provides for in the absence of a charter provision is that the initial terms are one, two, and three years. But then each succeeding in order to get them staggered in the first place, but then each term is after that is a three-year term, which makes a great deal of sense for a, a commission like the HED board, because it takes a while to really build up the expertise. And if someone is serving in a one-year term or a two-year term, or someone's saying, oh, gee, well, this is something I would like to do, you know, I'll, I'll try it out for a year. It's really not helpful to the board or to the ratepayers um, in, in that same respect. And it's, it's up to the select board to decide um, what the terms are going to be within the parameters of the town charter. And I would urge you to change all of the terms leave because they're now staggered. So you don't have to worry about um, unstaggering the terms, if you will, but to have all of the terms be three-year terms going forward. Um, I think it makes for a more workable board. Um, so I'll, I have a little bit of follow up to that. Um, the the village of Hardwick Electric Department used to have three trustees. And when the town and village became one, uh, Paul Giuliani was very instrumental in helping write uh, the new town charter. And I have the I have probably a copy. I have a copy of his original draft of this actual section 904, where he wrote out the staggering of the initial um, appointees to the board of commissioners. But then the actual statute, uh, nine, section 904 in the actual statute online now and what, what is law doesn't have those in it. Um, so I think Lynn is right. The initial ones were staggered, but the subsequent, one, subsequent ones could all be three years or, or whatever you decide. Because once they were set and established, they would only expire in a staggering form. So all you have to do is renew. It doesn't have to be different terms. They can all be the same because they're already staggered. So I would just maybe throw out the counterpoint um, 
I mean, Lynn did mention this, but the uh, availability of a one year term sometimes does allow new people to step in. Um, and I understand that it's, it, you know, can probably take a year to get up to speed. I think the same is true on the select board where we have yeah, one year too. seats and three year seats. Um, but sometimes the one year seat is I think a pretty useful thing to have because it does allow people to step in with a smaller um, commitment. And also we've had select board members who've been on three year seats who then decide, um, you know, I'm not sure I can do another three, but I'll do another one. Um, and so I think at least on the select board, I think that that's been um, advantageous to have those, but. To, to that end, uh, one of the things we discussed the last meeting was uh, having some manual and some information. And in fact, I've been working on it uh, rather than learning by osmosis. You know, I mean, it's really an efficient way to do it. And just a history of unit, short history uh, paragraph on municipal utilities, on Hardwick Electric, on the various entities within, uh, within Vermont, New England, how they work. I mean, you know, you come in, it, it's, there's no, there's no information and uh, it really is a matter of absorbing it or, you know, I mean, I've been doing scores of hours of research. I've taken an ISO New England uh, market course, uh, gone to the Velco uh, new transmission plan meeting, uh, things like that. And, you know, it's a lot of work, but all that could be distilled into something that would be really accessible and helpful to someone that comes on the board. Yeah, you know, because you assume people come on the board, they're gonna be reasonably well informed, but this is a lot of specific information and just having a, you know, a clear, not even comprehensive, but clear introduction would be really helpful and would allow for a shorter term and, and, and you know, people less of a commitment. Yeah, if you give me, give me a deadline and I'll finish it. <laughs> Awesome, you're recruiting. And um, Lynn and I, a couple of months ago, I met with Lynn to just learn more about the HD board, which is a great experience. Can't, can't hear you. Uh, thank you. Oh, can you hear me now? I have to unmute Kaylee. I had it. Is that okay? Now we can hear you. Oh, You're okay. Up. <laughs> I apologize. I'm on a um, a Chromebook uh, on spotty internet, so I never know what's going to happen. Um, I was just saying thank you, Vince, for um, for doing that. That sounds amazing, and um, that I was fortunate to meet with Lynn a couple of months ago to just understand more of what it means to be on the HED board. And you are all truly <laughs> amazing um, for supporting our municipal. I, it does seem like, I don't know Lynn exactly what it would take for us to dig deeper into that. Obviously we're not necessarily gonna do that tonight, but I think that it like a one year might not make sense for the HED board, just based on all the information that you have to know and the support that you have to provide. So I'm just curious what the next steps for, for, I guess, the select board figuring out how, if and how we might change those terms would be. I don't think we'd, I mean, I hadn't thought about this before Lynn just brought it up, but while we're, we've been sitting here, I did pull up the statute, it's pretty short. And like Lynn said, it doesn't specify terms. It just says that you set it up so that no more than two commissioners are appointed annually. Does talk talk about a staggered start in the beginning, but yeah, um, I don't think we'd have to necessarily do anything. We'd probably want to look and see if we have any sort of, um, uh, you know, if there's any select, if there's any record of select board deciding to do it a certain way. And but um, can somebody clarify? I was uh, what I'm hearing is that uh, we're assuming there's one year terms. I don't see that on what we have listed on the town's website under the board information at this time. There's two two year terms and three three year terms. Oh, did I miss something? 
No, no, I don't, I don't think you missed something. I was suggesting though, even I think that someone's really started coming up to speed at two years and then they're coming off the, the, the board um, and that's not necessarily in the right pair's interest. Um, and, and I'm not sure if you don't, whether you run into a staggering problem if you have some two-year terms and some three-year terms where no more than two people can be appointed in any one year, I think you do get into a situation where you unstagger when the intent was to stagger, if that made sense. I, yeah, I believe that's correct. I think we went through that like six years ago uh, with Gina and uh, Mary. Uh, I'd have to go back. I'm sure Jess could tell us if I had her go back. Yeah, okay, so we should take a look at that. Um, and Mike, do you want to forward the draft that you referred to as well? The draft from Giuliani. Sure. The, the, what it looks like to me uh, was a copy of the original draft uh, that I have and then the actual filing that became law. Uh, they, were, they were within like a month of each other, which makes perfect sense. Uh, but yes, I'd be certainly happy to scan those over to you. We had talked to, I mean, um, this is kind of going back to Sean's comment about uh, the terms that are coming up. I don't want to jump into that if we're not finished talking about the, or did we kind of come to a conclusion about the, <laughs> the terms we're going to look into it? Um, so we had, I had talk, um, we had talked a little bit about this at our last joint meeting, I believe, but um, thinking about how we're, what we're asking people to provide in terms of their letter of intent and their experience and their interest. And also if that's the same or different than current commissioners, I think is something worth talking about. Um, uh, last year, it was really all over the board what was given to us. And so I don't know if it was fair for new board members to really understand the experience level of everybody. So I was hoping we could come to some sort of consensus or maybe Vince, we could use those kind of what you're working on to say, before you write your letter of intent or express interest, read this so you understand what you're getting into. <laughs> So you're, yeah, we could, uh, it seems like time is short, but we could um, try to do something that would outline a little better what the responsibilities are. Is that what you're thinking, Kaylee? Yeah, it could. I mean, it could be that. It could also be um, when we ask for, you know, if I think what we also ask for should be consistent for everybody. So, or maybe not consistent for everybody, for, or at least consistent for if you're already a commissioner, um, then here are the things that we would like to see, you know, just as an example, or if you are not a commissioner, but you're interested in serving on the board, we look for utility experience or like just a bullet, like a simple bullet point of this is some of the experience that would, that would be helpful to you. If not, that's okay. You can still submit a letter of intent. Um, I think it would just be helpful for the select board to see information be, um, see those letters have some of the same information in them. Um, so that way we're, we just had, we had everything from a paragraph last year to multiple pages. And I just want to make sure it's equitable for everybody and that we're all on the same page about it. Yeah, for, for example, I think we're probably through this with this group of people, but Last year, my term, I think, was up, and I was one of the candidates to be considered by you. Um, I, had, I just had um, zero understanding. Thankfully, Sean reached out to me and sort of helped me navigate it, but I had zero understanding that I had to provide new documentation. You know, I provided pretty formal, complete documentation of my whole, you know, career background, what related, what didn't and had done a complete application the first time. And I was clueless that I needed to do it the second time. Fortunately, Sean talked to me and then I said, well, hey, Sean, can I, I nothing has changed. 
in the in the ensuing years. So I'd like to resubmit that package. And and you guys made it work. I'm not sure that's how you want to do it in the future, but um, that just shows that in this last go round, an existing HED commissioner didn't really know how to go through the process. And that was a problem for you potentially because if you didn't have that package, you were you were saying, oh, you there, saying should I go person A or person B? The incumbent, we don't know anything about them. Where I was thinking, well, of course you do. <laughs> Yeah, he said the same as last time, except I know more. <laughs> exactly. Which is actually my, my point, why I lean toward the three-year term instead of two, it was certainly never a one-year term, is you're pretty useless, unless you're a very unique background, perhaps like Lynn's. You're really useless. You're, you're really learning for the first year. Now, I think Vince's materials can help that, can speed it along. That'll be useful. But this is definitely... Uh, a situation where if, if I were on the select board and I had candidates, if you've got somebody up to speed who seems to be doing a good job, uh, that's something worth considering. Uh, but th there are things, and even if someone has a background, just the specific structure like VEPSA providing the type of support it does yeah. and the independence that it has from the boards of all the, the component utilities, you know, is something that has a significant impact that you would only learn about, but, you know, by being on the board. I mean, there's the specific utility background may or may, it will help for some things, but there are a lot of other specific things that, that, you know, really have to be either learned while on the board or by reading or not anyway. Would the, would the HD board, I mean, maybe we maybe we do have some time tonight. I apologize again for being late, but it would be helpful. I don't know enough to create specific questions like that personally, um, but maybe some specific questions that the select board can ask when, when and if um, new individuals apply. Um, last year we had, thank you to Vince and Michael who came and it was great to be able to talk to you in person, but maybe there are some some specific questions that your board can come up with that might help us if we understand the questions <laughs> um, know who might be the best fit. It, it, yeah, it, you know, after our discussion, after the last meeting, I've been trying to think about this because it's, it's not one size fits all. It, it's not any single kind of background that's going to be particularly helpful or useful. We have had some occasions where people have been on the board who, and dropped off because they said, well, this isn't what I expected it to be. And at least that, I think maybe if people would come to some of our meetings before they decide that they want to be on the board, that would be, and, and frankly, that ought to be a good indicator of somebody having the interest. If someone says, gee, I want to be on the board, they live, they've lived in the community for 10 years and they've never come to a meeting. Um, you know, they may not be the most um, invested in it. They might be, but, but that's maybe one, one marker. The, another thing that could be done is to, you know, our, our, the packets that, that the board looks at every month uh, are public. And those could be made available in some way to people who are considering being on the board. Um, and saying these are the kinds of things that we, you know, that the board evaluates. You know, if if it, are you, you know, are you comfortable with 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 uh, with budgets and PLs and forecasts, um, and working with with consultants? And you know, there's a range of things that you can sort of glean from looking at 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 the packet. Um, you know, I would say that someone who really doesn't like numbers and doing analytic things is probably not the best fit uh, <clears throat> you know for the board because we spend a lot of time doing that um there's but i don't just, know how you evaluate that entirely there's one um just one vote for um televising the meetings again because we are we, we are, we are, are you yeah, okay. I didn't. I didn't know, but I actually I went to um, get some uh, some plants from someone who was selling them, and she said, "Oh, it's so nice to see you in person. I see you every month." 
Oh, well, that's, great. that's great. That's great. Yeah, no, I was so, uh, you know, I, I didn't know because I never watch it. Um. So the, uh, the Board of Commissioners has, we, we considered discussing, but we didn't discuss in particular qualifications that we had thought up for, uh, for being a commissioner. Now, this is obviously a decision entirely up to the select board, but I've written up four qualifications. I'm happy to send them on to the to you on the select board for your consideration, or would you prefer to have the uh, Hardwick Electric Board put together one that we all think is good? Well, ideally it would be uh, from the whole board. Right. Right. Well, we might try to do that when we meet next week, if we fail that, maybe I'll send in mine as part okay. of my application. So yeah, I mean, there are uh, situations where I think I can think of like the library board or trustees when they have seats open, they um, they actually make recommendations. Maybe we should be thinking about something like that, where because only you guys know what the mix is and how um what you know. we might need yeah mm -hmm. what's missing what's not you know i don't know just thinking i mean recommendations are always next, helpful the next opening is this june coming there's two seats it's yeah. as of july it's pretty 1st. fast it's as of july 1st so it, it's it's yeah. but it, t technically i mean if you have people that are ready to stay in their seat just like re-up so to speak then that would potentially be your recommendation and then that would give us a lot more guidance okay do you do you as a select board want us on hardwick electric to make recommendations uh, i personally think it would be helpful but that's up Eric, to the what do you think i would agree that it would be very helpful yeah, I'm just thinking about the the similarities and differences between the, you know, like the library board or the um, TRB or something like that versus the electric board. And um, yeah, I mean, I think it would be, it probably would be helpful to have a recommendation. I think one of the reasons we do that for a library, for example, is because it takes some of the work off filling those seats off off of our plate a little bit right so it's not just recommending if if we're saying it would be great if you recommend someone that also puts the onus on them to identify that person or people well, yeah it's true but only the only these guys are going to know who's um even who's attended a meeting which as we know nobody really does but um who's inquired, who's said that they're watching, you know, yeah. I, I don't know, it's helpful. Yeah. It wouldn't hurt. I mean, I don't, no. yeah, I don't think more information is ever bad in this scenario. We don't yeah. have a lot. You do all the planning and then nobody's interested. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think though, uh, Mike, maybe you could get Sean though, um, a packet, you know, a, a typical packet from a meeting that at least when people inquire could be distributed to them to give them a sense of the things that that, uh, that, we're, that we look at. Yeah, well, no you problem. Said, you said those are public. Are they published or like? So we don't pu we don't publish them, but 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 you know. They're, They're subject to open where, records law. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. So if there's anything that's confidential, it doesn't go in that main part of the packet anyway. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay. So it's, it's available to people if they want to see it, but yeah. we don't distribute it as a matter of course. Okay. That's similar, I guess, to our pack. We have a similar packet. That probably yeah. Anybody that wants it can have it, but we don't make, we don't go about distributing it in any official way. We try to get to the duties and responsibilities and then Lynn's mentioned this already and that is just folks need to recognize 
a significant time commitment that, you know, yeah. don't go into this blindly thinking. So that is really important that, you know, people understand, hey, look, here's your number of meetings. Here's extra research time. You have to be committed to this if you're jumping in the game. That's really important to say right on the front end if somebody's trying to get in the game. Um, okay, so yes, it would be helpful if uh, I think what what I'm hearing from the select board is yes, it would be helpful if the board of commissioners wants to put forward um, names or recommendations. It also sounds like it'd be helpful to have ultimately to have some questions to ask or uh, of of applicants. Um, was I just thinking? Oh, when we post um, uh, openings, which we have to do in uh, uh, our paper of record, do we, it seems like that's an opportunity to put some of these things forward and say, you know, the, that this is an opening that there's, you know, involves analytical thinking, looking at budgets and balance sheets, um, you know, uh, strongly recommended that you at least um, view or attend a one meeting prior to to um, submitting a letter of interest, that kind of thing. Yeah, it seems like that's what Kaylee was saying, kind of like a, you know, little, like a, a boiled down job description, sort of, you know. When we so advertised no last thinking. time, Mike provided me a couple sentences that had some of that already. We could certainly expand on that, but I did ask him for a couple sentences or like skill sets should be good at da 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 da. I don't remember what they were. I don't have it in front of me, but um, we did provide some of that. So it might just be a matter of expanding on that. I think yeah, that we we can expand on that, and I I think to try and simplify this, which I think will probably provide the select board with at least some level of assistance um, maybe a an annual discussion between clearly our leader Lynn and from my experience clearly your leader Eric uh, to just have that discussion annually or as required um, I think maybe that would simplify and still get you the information you're looking for Okay, yeah, that's a good idea too. I think that uh, potentially a um, little bit fleshed out description for a posting could also serve the select board when people come to the select board meeting and we could have have those bullet points or, or qualifications as a reference of things to ask folks about um, to just, I mean, they may or may not address them in a letter of interest and we could ask for expanded views. And a link to a PDF with the further description maybe yeah we could do that too if we had it if we had a further description sure this is just uh, some quick logistics on this cycle um just some quickly referencing the tight. charter quickly referencing the charter for uh, appointments and what it shows in the charter is that we would be obligated to advertise for a 10-day period uh, any um, information received would be announced at a board meeting then there is uh, seven days built in before a decision is made. So just doing some quick math, it looks like we would have to run our ad by May to start, uh, make sure it's published uh, on or about May 24th. That would allow the select board to announce the candidates uh, information received at the June 3rd meeting. And then they would be in a position to do appointments June 17th. So that would keep you on cycle for uh, in place for July 1st, if that makes sense. Although the, the electric department doesn't have a board meeting until the third Monday. So of if, any given month. Yeah, so that if, 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 if you went to a decision on, on the July, if, I, I don't have the calendar open in front of me, but whatever that first Thursday in July is. It would be, there's no meeting that week. The next board meeting, if I'm, uh, Casey catch me here, but I think our next meeting is July 16th, if I'm not mistaken. So let me, let, me, let me chime in here on this because I, 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 I believe I specific, I believe what you're talking about. I specifically discussed with Paul Giuliani and Elijah uh, Emerson, our municipal council. 
And they advised me that if every uh, if every commissioner's term had expired and the select board did not reappoint anyone, those commissioners remain commissioners until they are replaced. Huh. So if you have a window yep. of a couple of weeks of gap, that's not a gap. Well, in fact, we had, we, we, we did that. We asked yeah, about this because we went, we went over a year. Yep. Because, and uh, we wanted to make sure that we, that the actions that we took were in effect and looked into whether we had to ratify everything that had been done and we were advised we didn't because yeah, we were all set yeah so, so we have a, we have a little bit of time as the point mike right yeah yeah to and make our, sure we our, get a good ad in order right we want a decent ad that covers what we're trying to you know make sure folks understand what they're getting into here our you know and our, our first unless we were changing when we have our regular meetings but historically we've been the third monday of the month and that would be the 19th of july We have a meeting next week, though. We do. But I'm not going to be at. Right. And you probably have a June one, too. And we have a June meeting, too. Yep. Yep. I will be at that one. Yeah, I don't think there's, I mean, I don't think there's a problem with us pushing the select board decision appointments out to the July 15th. Thursday the 15th of July that we we're kind of talking about and that gives us a little more room on the whole advertising whatever and that's really not have. that's not a problem well and it also gives then if we're if we're gonna if you're gonna suggest that people come to a meeting and see what people the could or it gives a chance for people to come to the June meeting yeah, I mean, I, I kind of think that this time around, we're discussing this in a time frame that's tight enough that yeah. maybe it isn't going to um, really have any practical effect on anybody applying from who's not in this group. But um, but just for future, I think we ought to establish the um, a, a practice that could be replicated and useful and we ought to advertise a little earlier and put that information out there. Can I just do a calendar thing for a second? Because I remember last year when I joined the board, Lynn was not on the board, and then someone resigned, and then she was back on the board, and now you're saying she's up in June? Was it only a one-year term? No, what, what happened was Remainder. that Dave Mitchell was appointed to a two-year term, and he resigned. And I replaced him on his two year. To finish uh, it. But, 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 but this is where it gets screwy. This is what, what had happened was that his two year term started the year before, but there hadn't been any reappointments done because there was a whole year of cycle that was missed, which was why there were four people who, there were four seats that were up to be filled last year because it was two years worth of seats. And there were two year terms and three year terms in there, or it might've been, I don't remember what the mix was, mm -hmm. but in any event, Dave's term didn't start in 2020. It had started in 2019. You were finishing his last year. Right? And I was, I was finishing his last year. Okay. So that's... So I think we had to discuss at our next select board meeting the idea of expanding the, or changing the way we do terms to be all three year. Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I think. I think we have a process for how we're going to roll this time. Does that sound right? Okay. All right. Other, where are we on our little agenda thing here? We're running a little behind. Yeah, as usual. <laughs> um, it's my, 
Um, so can, what are the things we're going to hit where it's, somebody had notes? Do we hit everything? Casey's got notes. We were going to. Are we moving to the oh, commissioner reports? Yes, commissioner reports, new business, whatever that stuff. Somebody wanted to yeah, know Gary, about the, something about Gary Holloway prison. Team, yeah, something about that. It's the only other yeah. thing I have on the list. Yep. So that is, um, I don't know if everybody's aware, but Gary Holloway from the state um, is uh, in charge of this program. It's a grant program. The state is encouraging um, somebody, I guess it's the second or third round of this. They're encouraging um, uh, EV charging um, company to set up locations in I think six towns. One of them is Hardwick. Um, and the it basically is a request for proposal that's out there. Anybody who submits a proposal has to have a, include all six towns. They can't do just one or two of them. So um, it, I guess it seems likely that there's an EV charging station coming soon to a parking lot near you. Um, and uh, just one wondered, I guess, if you guys were aware of it, had thought about it, um, if there are issues, so we can in the only influence we can have is informally, we can reach out to Gary Holloway and who's directing this program. And we can say, you know, when people come to you with proposals, you could mention that one place might be like the, the vacant lot where the flood zone was, or, uh, a, another, you know, location might be over here, but that doesn't have any binding influence on anyone it's just a you know throwing it out there i guess but i don't know if you guys have given it any thought or even know about it didn't know about it and we have i'm i'm a, i'm gen <laughs> generically whoa <laughs> aware of uh the grant monies uh, i have had a couple local business owners contact me about uh you know how they might access those funds and, and how they might uh, take care of the technical aspects of an installation. Uh, for us to do something with chargers, you know, we have, we'd have to develop a rate structure uh, and file that with the PUC, et cetera, et cetera. So at this point, we're still in our uh, getting the pilot project going on a test EV charger here at Hardwick Electric. <clears throat> that will be in by the end of this summer. Um, and it's been on hold. It went on, it should have been in last year. It went on hold because we postponed a couple capital projects due to COVID because we didn't know what our revenues were or weren't going to do and how that was all going to happen. So that project is back on a front burner and it includes a new uh, retaining wall out back. So until the retaining wall is in, I didn't want to install the charger. Uh, the intention is to install a charger and allow uh, HED customers to utilize it at no charge. Uh, a charge is a, you know, like two bucks, a little under two bucks. Um, and see and gauge how much interest and how much need there really is at this point in time uh, in our local community. Um, based on other pilot projects that have gone on at other municipal electric departments with much better uh, exposure locations and much higher traffic volumes, uh, one of them being up in Swanton where four major uh, highways come together, including I-89 and Swanton and that surrounding area is a huge bedroom community of commuters uh, heading down to St. Albans, Milton and the Colchester area. And they have found that they spent a whole bunch of money on this, uh, these installations and that they are now six years later spending more money on the credit card reading machine fees than what they are getting in revenues from the chargers. So my, my personal take on this whole thing is that once Vermont, uh, once the car manufacturers develop an effective uh, pickup truck 
for cold climates such as those here, uh, EVs aren't really going to be an answer for us. But once a pickup truck is a is a common uh, mode of transportation, then there's going to be a big demand. It was that's just, my take on it. It was just a piece in the news that Ford is coming out with an electric F one. Yep. <laughs> I was just say, there I you think, go. I think Mike, that's going to happen sooner than sooner than you think. Um, that being said, I just wanted to mention two things to the a the project that Eric mentioned. It has to be within the designated, there's a specific designated district of Hardwick where it has to be. Um, so, and I don't believe that it would extend to the electric department, for example. I know that's your own project, Mike, but it goes to- It does, it does, I think. Okay, it's basically right on, uh, just to your point too, because we have um, three different highways that intersect to various places in Hardwick, the idea is that it would be somewhere in that corridor. And then I also wanted to mention the there's another grant that's available, which is different than this one, which is to support individual businesses setting up EV stations. And that's actually, I believe, through Green Mountain Power. Um, but that's a separate there. And I had gotten a lot of questions from um, some public about that too. I don't believe that's even available through for AGD customers because it's through Green Mountain Power. Um, but so that that's another thing that the state has been supporting. But this is like a very specific only six communities and having um, and I hope that Gary will give us more information about it. Um, so are, are you got, uh, I mean, are you asking for our input or are you wondering if it's a good idea or. Uh, OK, because I mean, as far as national and state. Uh, energy planning goes, electrification is coming. And uh, uh, at the Velco meeting, it was very clear that with the, with the modeling that they were doing that it was coming and it was rapidly increasing, even though anecdotally in specific locations, it may not be happening. Um, uh, they well, plan the, the low data for us does not indicate that it's happening at all. Right, the, the load, but I, I'm actually talking about Vermont uh, on a larger scale, you know, maybe in this area, not, but it will be coming. And if it's free money, I mean, if it's a grant to uh, put it in place, I mean, I, I can't really see any downside. And, you know, I mean, th this happened in the 30s with the with the rural electrification. I mean, th yeah. you know, uh, investments were made and they drove uh, further usage, which drove further investment. And, you know, we're just kind of at that, it feels like we're at that point that it's, it's just gonna amplify and, and Again, the, the national energy policy and state energy policies, uh, clearly th there, there are a lot of drivers that are increasing electrification between, between cars and heat pumps, especially coal climate heat pumps. But anyway. So, I, and I think we can't forget about tourism um, as a big part of what's happening downtown. Um, there are some people who potentially would stop or come to Hardwick as a destination if there was a if there was a charging station it's an attractive I mean it's like wow they have a charging station they're they're up Let's to have dinner well, yeah. one of the one of the things that we you know with with once we get our charging station up is we can certainly consider whether that's something that could be used by people other than HED customers and if that were made known so that somebody who's going to dinner at one of the restaurants in the village, who's got an electric car, maybe can park in the, in the HED parking lot and, and, and charge their car um, in the evening. I mean, that's, that's certainly something that, that, uh, that we can be looking into. This is just a detail, but how, how would you determine if uh, uh, someone charging their car as an HED customer, would they have an account number that they'd have to put in or something? Sure, so the, the free, charging they would just have to come in and say hi i'm customer xyz i live at this address i'd like to charge my car and we flick the switch and turn them on for two hours oh, okay then in the also evening we could put it into an auto mode if we end up where in a place that lynn is suggesting that we might with a card reader and then it would be open to the public okay. so um just to come back to where i started with the program that um 
the state is is doing. I just wondered, um, you know, the select board, I think, was thinking that that old flood zone empty lot might be a nice place to to do a EV charging station. So the deal is it's, um, I think it has to have six dedicated parking spots. So just thinking about places that um, would attract people to spend their time in downtown while their car is charging. Um, and uh, so we just were thinking about it, I think just for strictly from that point of view of where's a good place what, that we what, would like. Um, where, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get my head around Eric. Where, where what, what, what do you call it? Street? Down? A little quarried out thing in, on 15. Oh, that they, burned. Where, where, yeah. where, where, that burned, okay. We used to have all the fights. <laughs> I mean, the other spot, Eric, that we talked about was at the end of the um, Bemis block there by the clip joint. Oh, right. That building has, every everything's right there. I mean, there used to be a building there. But I don't know if you can park six cars there. Well, if we ever do the work, on that space. I don't know if you and can. It's no, the, the geography, the geography doesn't work there, Sherry. Tom and I looked at it. It's a little bit challenging with the pitch of the road coming down, but I think there's an overarching issue. Um, I think, Mike, you can correct me if I'm, I think you need three-phase power for this, don't you? Uh, no, you don't have to have three-phase power, but uh, if you wanted to get something, uh, say you wanted to put a charging station in front of Sherry's store, I don't know how you would, I don't know how Hardwick Electric would possibly get to that location unless you're going to cut up Main Street and uh, incur some really huge expenses for those installations. So the locations need to be strategically uh, planned and placed. And nobody's come to you yet? Like no. already in a parking lot. No. Yeah, I, I, I thought from day one when we were talking about charging stations, you know, why why don't we look to do something down at Tops Market and nobody's interested in that. So, I don't, so I don't one know. Thing timing, one thing timing wise too is that next summer, right, Eric, downtown will be getting repaved. Is that so there's, I mean, that we don't have to, I don't think we have time tonight to talk about that, but if there is, if there are any projects like that, Mike, like that might be a good time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And maybe it's not EV charging stations. Maybe it's something else that the town can consider. Maybe it's town yeah. lights that need to be fixed or whatever. But um, but that that'll be happening. And and I think that's like the yellow barn all the way through downtown, right? Yep. Uh, yeah. They're actually, uh, uh, Tom's okay. updated me that it looks like they're actually going to be working on the section from where our well building is, which is just toward the downtown, downtown side of the uh, Tops Market turn heading uh, westbound, it looks like they're actually going to be putting some pavement down there in this cycle uh, around that yellow burn area. But the major project is through all the class one in the village area for 2022. But, but just to understand what this grant is, this is for a grant for a private developer to come in and put in six charging stations yep. in a in one in one of in a particular town yep. hardwick being one of the towns yeah and it's and six yeah. and it's six charging stations together yep um actually i'm not sure that that's clear it, that maybe they could be different it didn't say specifically they had to be together on public property nope nope it no, can be I on think... private because the wilcott street is is larry's property and it's Got us our sales sign on it. Basically, there's going to be a developer who's going to propose project a project that has these charging stations in six towns in Vermont, and they the state pays. I think ends up paying like eighty percent. So the, Hardwick uh, would have to match twenty. No, Hardwick doesn't do it. Oh. We don't have anything to do with oh, it other than. Oh, I see. Oh. We weren't consulted in the beginning. We just found out about it. And we said, whoa, could, could we offer where we think, you know, we'd like to have this kind of near where people can walk downtown. Well, this so is a random RFP. So the town's yeah. involvement is really if somebody wanted to put it on public, on a public place. So, or, or, or if, if it were the, what you're calling the flood zone mm -hmm. part, there might be traffic considerations about having mm -hmm. people pulling in and out into, into Wilkett Street there. Or it's, cross 
stuff like or, that. Or if somebody wanted to put in six spots into the parking lot next right. to the village, there might be some objections to that if right. only people who are charging can park in those right. spots. Um, so that's, and from the electric department's standpoint, it's, it's do we have or can we reasonably get the facilities to the chargers that would be needed? Can we, can we get the, them yeah. the power that they need in a way that doesn't involve ripping up? Do, do, you know what class, class. do you know what class chargers they are? I did, I've forgotten. It is spec'd out in the RFP, what they have to be. There's like a, I think they're two, there are three stations that each can charge two cars. And I think two of those stations are lower power and one's a higher power. And I don't remember. Yeah, the, the class, is. the class one stations are basically gone because they take so long. Uh, the class two stations are, I believe, a three hours for a full charge, up to three hours. And then the class threes are fast charge hour to an hour and 20 minutes. I think the issue with the fast chargers, the class threes is that the, some of the battery manufacturers batteries don't like being charged that quickly. Mm -hmm. So the level twos are kind of the steady Eddie right now that uh, do it fast enough, but don't cause harm to the battery system. So maybe that's why they're specking two of, maybe it's two class twos and one class three. Yeah. It might be. Battery management is supposed to take care of it with the individual cars. I mean, it's supposed to limit. If you put in a larger charger, it's supposed to limit. When do these proposals need to be in? I don't remember. Don't ask hard questions. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so I'm like, I can't help it. <laughs> Eric, maybe what we could do is forward to the That's a great idea. what Gary sent us. And then um, I don't remember a specific timeline, <clears> but <throat> it's all in our board packet. It should be pretty easy to send over. So yeah. what, what input? It's, oh, sorry. If it's, if, you know, if it's, if it's in a very short time frame, it's probably not much of anything that can be done. If it's a longer time frame, we could certainly put something on the website that this is out there if somebody is interested. Yeah. So there's some publicity that we could do, and we certainly would cooperate with with anybody that's. Yeah, I would I would think that anybody who's serious about their proposal is going to have to talk to HED before they submit their proposal. I would have yeah. thought so. Yeah, um, just just for for uh, the flood zone location might be. I mean, it certainly is a great central location. But I can tell you it will be near to impossible unless we go through the road underneath the road to serve that location overhead. Uh, well, we would have to we have to cross uh, personal property and actually the pole there that's next to the river, we wouldn't be able to guy it. So if we hung a service from it, it would pull the pole over into the road. So um, yeah, there's Sorry. there's considerations for every site. So whoever's right developing better include us yeah new steel pole <laughs> uh mike, so mike i just sent you the information on the bid okay thank you let's do the end of june everybody great um so doug joined us late and has his hand up and has had for a while doug did you have a question yeah um uh, first off i don't know if there's a decoupling between what the downtown designated downtown area would be and this where the charging station has to be i mean if the does it apply if somebody's outside that designated area to be able to do this uh they you have to we can forward you the um rfp it's it has a map of where it needs to be yeah that would be great because i would say that i mean it seems to me if you're if you publicize these boundaries and somebody who has land where they have space for these six parking spaces realizes that hey they could get some sort of benefit out of this tax wise or something then they would be more than willing to accommodate that and i think that fast charge is probably the way to go because it's much more quick you know so what what, what role does the select board or do you see hardwick electric having in this the only role that I was able to figure out that we have is we can um, suggest to Gary Holloway locations that we think would be good or, um, you know, and it really is just a suggestion. Just tell people, hey, you should talk to Larry Hamill who owns this piece of property or you should talk to whoever. 
Um, we don't really have any input. I mean, if somebody, if the developer has a relationship with um, Dollar General stores in all six towns, maybe that's where they're going. I mean, we don't. Well, these these locations would have the least permitting resistance. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, it's just a. Um, huh. I was being snide. Yeah. I said they'd have the fewest Teslas. Oh. <laughs> oh, geez. Well, it's not a supercharging station. It's not like a 40 minute charge. There uh, was a Tesla parked in front of Whistle today. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, let's move along. Any other? Um, I don't remember what else was on our list. I know that HED had news about their, um, you want to share new, your HED news about your um, settlement? Right. Sure. Uh, help Mike, me. You want to? Go for it, Mike. <laughs> I you, couldn't hear you, Mike. Sorry, go ahead. You, you no, can no, have that. Go for it. Oh, you want me to do it? No problem. Sure. So, uh, did, I take it you didn't share my email, Eric. I did, but go ahead. But, you know, that was middle of the day. Okay. Tell us what's up. So after uh, much ado and uh, almost 10 years uh, since the Joyce Be uh, Bell Vance embezzlement, we have finally uh, reached closure, final closure on the entire matter uh, with a $960,000 settlement against uh, Cattell, Brannigan, and Sargent, uh, the auditors who uh, were responsible for providing us with auditing services during uh, 1.26 million of the $1.6 million being stolen. A um, Couple other pieces to that component are, uh, well, first, we're very happy that it's over. We're very happy that our customers are being made 100% whole on all uh, financial losses that we suffered. And part of the settlement includes a shifting of uh, payments from Joyce's pension plan that used to come to us on a monthly basis. As part of the settlement, they will now be going to the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. So the settlement not only makes us whole, it's also gonna repay uh, a little under 50% of the $500,000 insurance payment we received from the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. So phenomenal, phenomenal settlement and uh, we couldn't be happier with how it's all come about. With that, I let you comment as you'd like, Lynn. There will be a, a front page article tomorrow. And uh, there were some follow up questions that I answered. Uh, yeah. So hopefully there will be a good spread on the front page. Great. That, so it's good news. Very good news. So we'll read about it in the Gazette tomorrow. Yep. Tomorrow. Yeah. Awesome. Um, any other things that we want to discuss or can we end on that good note? Kaylee's good to end. Let's I mean, no I, I've only been here an hour, so. <laughs> <laughs> A yeah. short timer. All right. Um, we should um, set up another, at least uh, target another time to meet and say six, do we want to do every six months? Was that our, I think that's kind of what we were doing, right? So that would be the 11th month. It's like, do you want to try to, we'll try to set up something uh, in November. Yep. Do we want to try to set a date now that we're just gonna, just to have something to bump up against, we might have to change it, but. How about earlier in the month versus later? So 
Uh, well, if we did the second Tuesday, like we did now, that's November 9th. Right. That When's uh, Veterans Day this year? It's Thursday the 11th. Yeah, of course. Sorry. Right. 11th. That sounds so. We want to target sounds November good. 9th? Yes. Hey. Awesome. Works. Awesome. So, uh, so we'll set that up and who knows we may need to move it when we get closer but at least it's something to shoot for and um uh, in the meantime we'll look for some information from uh you guys about um what to put in our i guess what to put in our posting right maybe maybe casey will work with mike a little more on that is the strategy there hey yeah all right. Well, thanks, everybody. Thank you all. Have a good night. I say, I say, let's adjourn and have, have a good night. Everybody have a good night.